By popular demand, in this video I'm gonna be talking about buying vacant land in Asheville, North Carolina. In fact, in the whole Western North Carolina, so don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Elena Kavrigin with Nesting Dolls Realty at Realty One Group Pivot here in Asheville, North Carolina. If this is your first time on my channel and you want to know everything about living, breathing, working, buying land in Asheville, North Carolina, you need to hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time I make a new video. If you need help relocating to Asheville, North Carolina or anywhere around Asheville, feel free to reach back to me by phone, email, text. This is my information right here. I love getting those phone calls, emails and text messages from everyone who need help, who need support, who have a question, who are trying to figure out whether this area is even the right fit for them. So if you're just thinking, reach out to me, I got your back when relocating to Asheville, North Carolina. I have a lot of people reaching out to me from all over the United States who want to come to Asheville or to the Asheville area and who want to buy a piece of property, piece of vacant land and buy and build it, their house there. Land in general and building process in Western North Carolina has its own unique features and things you need to consider if you are thinking about building on the vacant lot. You might already know that Western North Carolina is a mountainous region of North Carolina. So finding flat land here is challenging at best. <laughs> Pretty much it doesn't exist. It's, it's super hard to find anything flat. And if flat parts of the region do exist, they typically are already taken, so there's nothing more available. It would be very rare or super duper expensive. And for the record, those who made some comments that our mountains are not real mountains, they're just hills compared to the, some western mountains, the Appalachian mountain range are some of the oldest, if not the oldest in the world. They're just weathered. Give those western mountains another couple hundred million years and they might look just like our hills. So I just want to get this out of the way and once and for all and move on. <laughs> right, so back to vacant land. Buying vacant land and building a house from scratch on the vacant lot, uh, on the vacant lot have all these different costs associated with it. And the costs and issues that might come up or are very obvious depend on where this vacant lot is. For example, if you're buying a vacant lot in the city limits, most of the time you will have access to city water and city sewer. And of course, electricity is right there. So more than half of your issues or um, things that might come up and most of your costs associated with building a house um, and not building the house, but uh, building infrastructure for the house, you know, are taken care of. The city water, city sewer, electricity is right there, probably on the neighboring or the street next over or right on the road right there. So, you know, there's really nothing else you need to do. Just maybe cut some trees, clear the lot, prep the, um, grade the lot for foundation, things like that. One thing, uh, or a couple of things to consider in this situation is zoning and that will tell you how uh, how many houses you can build on this vacant lot for example the setbacks you know and that will determine you know how also how big of a house you can put on the lot if the lot is too small you might not be able to put a big house on it depending on the setbacks and also deed restrictions and deed restrictions actually, you know, uh, go all over, um, not just vacant lots in the city limits, but in all the um, vacant lots available for sale anywhere. Restrictions can include things like no modular homes allowed, no mobile homes allowed, square footage, minimum square footage, and things like that. If the vacant plot is located in, in the subdivision or um, community and has HOA involved, then there, are, there might be even more restrictions involved, uh, such as architectural review, 
uh, what you can and cannot do on the property. For example, some don't allow fences in the front yard, some don't allow outbuildings or like sheds, just all these different various restrictions that HOA can impose. So you really need to be aware of those. And really, if you're working with a realtor, he or she should be able to guide you through these steps and things to watch out for. One other thing that I think is super important to consider doing during your due diligence period, if you are you know, buying fake vacant land, not just in city limits, but anywhere else, is doing a survey. And I know sometimes it can be hard or challenging or very expensive to do a survey if there's like 100 acres or something like that and it can take forever but survey will is basically the only way for you to know the exact property lines um, unless a previous owner already had a survey and you could find and identify those metal pins in the ground or the uh, seller can show you those um, pins and um, show you the boundary lines the survey can identify uh, any possible encroachments from neighboring properties um, and if that's the case, the seller needs to take care of those before the closing and before it becomes your problem. But also, if you don't have a survey in your name, title insurance will not be able to protect you against like some kind of um, disputes or if there's like an encroachment and it comes up later, you know, after you already bought the property, title insurance will not be able to help you with that. And that's huge. So. Surveys are super important and can eliminate any additional costs and headache down the road. Now, let's talk about vacant land out of city limits in the county, in different counties, not just Buncombe County, but any other county in Western North Carolina when, where there are mountains. Um, a lot of people think that they can, you know, they see all these listings that uh, kind of sound like a good deal and I've talked about, about it in other videos as well. And we have a saying here that when it's cheap, it's steep. If somebody is telling me that they want to buy some land for, and their budget is 60,000 and they want like 20 acres. I mean, that pretty much tells me that the only thing they're going to probably going to be able to find will be something on the side of the mountain. I mean, there will be, it, it's going to be very hard to find something that's going to be flat and usable. I mean, yes, they're going to, they're going to be able to, uh, to, to buy side of the mountain with all the privacy and woods and all that, but you know, not something that will be readily uh, usable and ready to build on. There are a lot of vacant land uh, listings that's been on the market for years. And I mean, the reason they were on the market for years is because they are like this, you know, you have to climb. And if you think that it, you know, it costs, it's, it's a cheap lot, it's very affordable, it's gonna cost you twice or three times, four times or even more to develop that land and just put, be able to put just that one house with a driveway coming up to it. And this is what I'm gonna be talking about next. Quick side note that I just wanna make here before I go on about the cost, is that when you're buying vacant land in Western North Carolina, you or your realtor, and really it's a realtor's job to guide you through the process, should check not only on things like uh, how steep it is, and that's very easily to verify on GIS maps. You don't have to drive there sometimes to realize that it's going to be like this, but also stability index. Is this land and lot even suitable for building? I mean, there might be, you know, it might be all, um, if you look on GIS, covered with those purple and uh, pink spots, and that means it's not a stable land, that you can't really build on it, or, you know, it's going to be probably super duper expensive to build on it and it's not going to be worth it so that goes to any vacant land whether it's in city limits or outside of city limits doesn't matter these are the two things that can be easily verified just looking at gis maps and looking at all those filters that are available pretty much in every county 
Now, if you are outside of city limits and actually the farther you go from city limits, it's not uncommon to see and it becomes very common and basically the only option to have septic instead of city sewer because city sewer will not be available there. So every, pretty much every house out in the county will be on septic. One thing about septic is that once you have it installed, you don't have a monthly bill from a city. You know, unlike people who live in the city, they have monthly water and or bi-monthly water and sewer bills. Um, those who live on the septic, they don't have those bills. All right, now when you buy land, you need to make sure that you can actually have it installed because believe it or not, some places are very hard or impossible to install septic system on. And that is why during your due diligence period, and that is the period where you inspect the property and do all these tests that you need to do to make sure that you can build a house, you need to do a perk test. And that's ordered and that's done by the county. You pay a small fee and depending on the county, it might be different, but then the county orders a perk test. Somebody just comes there, digs a hole and they do their thing. Different counties have different rules about it. I feel like Buncombe County, for example, is easier uh, to deal with. Henderson County, for example, is a much more pain. Uh, they will actually need you to submit a house plan. Usually that's done by the builder. A builder needs to put a, a sketch of a house plan on a uh, land, on a, on a plat with all the setbacks, draw uh, where the driveway would need to be, and then indicate where, you know, the septic might go. So, you know, if a, if a lot is kind of small, there might be only one place for a septic to be, and that's where the county would go and test the soil at. Now, can you change the position of the house, or can you change the house? Yeah, down the road. Yeah, you can do that, but that, again, if you decide to do that before having a septic installed, you would need to pay again that fee and have a county come out, do a perk test, issue a permit. So, to tell, you know, a uh, long story short, <laughs> it can be a pain. It can take weeks to do that because uh, county is kind of behind on all those tests and all those things uh, and it can be anywhere from four weeks up to two months or even more before they can even come out and do the perk test. So that's important thing. That's something that you should, you must do during your due diligence period because you don't want all those surprises down the road after you already paid, after you became an owner and then just to realize that, hey, you cannot even put a house here with a septic. What are you going to do now? So you might wonder, all right, how much does it cost to put a septic, right? Usually it can be right around $5,000 to put septic in on, on a vacant lot. But if it doesn't perk in a certain place and you have to put a septic tank and septic above the house, let's say your house is right here, you have to put a septic right here. So all the contents from the house have to go, travel up the hill and you would need to have a pump that would bring the cost up to about ten thousand dollars so twice more just to have septic and a pump pump all the contents from the house to the septic so anywhere from ten i mean anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars ballpark the next thing you're gonna need and you cannot live without in the modern society is water running water <laughs> Uh, and in out in the county, pretty much everyone is sitting on a well, whether it's private well or shared well between like two or three houses or the whole community. Everyone is there out on the well. And that's another thing um, that can cost, depending on the depth, how much they have to drill, they can cost a lot of money. As an example, in our region, each area has an average depth of 600 feet and estimated at about $11,000. And there's always extremes. You know, the deepest that I've heard that they had to drill 
was 1400 feet 1400 feet and you know that's gonna cost a lot of money I've heard cases when people drilled or you know had well companies drill in three different places and they couldn't find water at all and after 25,000 you know already spent on trying to figure out where they're gonna put um, a well they finally decided to um, get water from um, a spring that was on the property but you might not always be that lucky and have a spring on the property I mean those are extreme cases but you know how as soon as you say that's not gonna happen to me it can happen so I'm just just here to kind of warn you and tell you about the best and worst case scenarios next thing is um, grading and clearing and preparing the um, site for building and yes because our mountains are so old they are basically all covered with woods you, you're not gonna see those you know mountains like you see in Utah and um, Arizona and Colorado where they're just uh, bare they don't, they don't have any uh, trees on it our mountains are covered with trees and a lot of vacant land is gonna be covered with trees it's not gonna be cleared so clearing uh, just enough to put the driveway and clear the lot for just the house can cost a lot of money clearing can depending on the size of the trees can be anywhere from 15 to twenty five thousand dollars or more depending again depending on the size of the lot that doesn't include the gravel uh, gravel in the ground uh, in the driveway can cost I mean about twenty five thousand again this number is just a ballpark it can be way more um, and if you choose to pave it's going to be an additional cost so as you can see there's all these ranges you know i can't give you one number because it, you know there's all these variables the size of the lot the steepness of the lot how wooded it is just to cut one tree some companies charge like 800 dollars. so if you count the trees that you have to clear that can add up to a lot of money of course every house has to have electricity you cannot live without electricity as well as internet and let me tell you we still have some areas in our region that have dead zones there's absolutely no um, internet there or there's a very limited number of internet providers and by limited I'm talking about one maybe if you're lucky so that can be a challenge the farther you go um, or I mean you really sometimes don't even have to go that far uh, to hit a dead zone so keep that in mind I really recommend getting on board with a builder before you even um, start looking for a vacant land because the builder can tell you uh, you know he can look he or she can look at the lot or at the listing and can you even tell you if it's worth pursuing it or not if it's gonna if you're gonna fit into your budget of how much you want to spend on the on the whole uh, house you know considering the price for, for the lot and putting all the infrastructure in and actually building the house so get on board with a builder I recommend checking out Asheville um, Home Builders Association website I'm gonna drop a link down in the description so you can check it out there's a lot of um, Ash local builders that are listed there not all but m I think most of them are there reach out to them I know a lot of them are super duper busy right now they are probably not gonna respond right away uh, builders are not known for best uh, communication <laughs> Just speaking from experience but be persistent and try to get on board with the builder really and last but not least point that I really would like to uh, stress about is financing now when you if you're paying with cash then you know you're done you're done with this video thank you for watching <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to this channel <laughs> and hit a little bell um, but if you decide to or if you plan on financing this vacant land you need to make a research now if you're just thinking about it because okay so lenders uh, we have the biggest amount of lenders who finance houses 
right? That's, that's the biggest number of lenders who finance single family homes. Then we have less lenders that fin will finance uh, construction to perm loan. And then even less so who would finance vacant land. It's really unfortunate. It's, it can be such a pain um, in the neck to find the right lender who would not only uh, finance um, uh, land, but who would finance a certain type of land because some of them have some weird restrictions and rules on what kind of land they would finance, what kind of land they wouldn't finance, uh, the amount that they would finance. I know some would not finance more than, I think, 90,000. So this is something you really need to look into before you even thinking about it, because I mean, that can, you know, really make or break uh, the decision of being able to build a house on a vacant lawn, land here in the Western North Carolina. I hope you found this information useful. Uh, drop your comments, hit me up with any questions about it. I'll be happy to go more into detail about the process of buying land, about anything that you've seen or maybe any listings that you've seen. My information is right here. Please, 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 if you're watching and you want to continue getting updates about anything that's happening in Asheville um, and Asheville area, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell to get notified every time I make a new video, and I will see you next time.